Shabbat Shalom. We are, uh, we're going to do something, it's not, it's not actually different, but a little different today. So what, uh, over the summer, a few people have uh, asked me a little bit about when I uh, teach some of the commentaries that we teach, and I kind of do a like, oh, you know, the famous guy, uh, Ramosha Alshich, and everyone's like, who's that famous? And we were just joking, that means 0.0001% of the population has heard of the person, it means they're famous. Uh, and, and so we're going to do one thing today. Um, we're going to look at a verse, two, two, three verses. We're going to do a little bit of parshanut on it and talk through some of the commentaries. And uh, I, I want to give credit where credit is due. I learned from um, Professor uh, Walter Hertzberg at the seminary. Um, I don't know if other seminary folk have learned with him or not. Um, he was sort of the, one of the main students of Nechama Leibovich. That's his sort of line and, um, and his way of looking at the Parsha. So if you take your, your Chumashim out, open it to page uh, um, 1061, the first, the first three lines here of our Torah reading on, uh, for Parsha Re'e is what we are going to look at for a few minutes this morning. And the way that Dr. Hertzberg would begin every class which is also, I believe, the way that Nechama Leibovitch would begin. Um, actually, uh, also Rav Soloveitchik, uh, I I've been told, would begin in the same way, which is um, to ask for questions. Um, the story of Soloveitchik famously is he once said, uh, he walked into class and he says, did anyone have any questions? And no one raised their hand, and he said, no questions, no class, and he left. Um, <laughs> which I'm sure he just had a lunch he wanted to get to. But that was the story. So what I want us to do is to look at the first verse. And if you want, go to the first, second, and third. So that's Devarim. Uh, we're, on, we're chapter uh, uh, 12, I'm sorry, 11, um, verse 26, 27, 28, but especially verse 26. And whether with yourself or someone next to you, what I want is as many questions as one can come up with about these lines, okay? It could be about the English, it could be about the Hebrew. If you have facility with the Hebrew, that's great. If you don't, ask someone next to you who seems like they might. And, you, uh, and so we're going to find as many questions as we can um, about these three verses. Any questions? Uh, okay, good. All right, so take a few seconds. Turn to the person next to you as many questions as you can come up with about these verses, the meaning, the context, the, the anything you can. Ready, set, go. Take another 18 seconds. Okay, take nine more seconds, and I've got prizes for the most bizarre questions that we've got. There's prizes here, all right?
Okay. All right. Let's go through questions on our verse. We're starting with the first verse of the parsha. Which means something like, well, that's like I'm gonna get. I don't want to tip my hand already. So, who's got questions? Questions on this verse? We're gonna we're gonna wrap around. Yes, Doctor What? Okay, so we've already got re si, not shema, or something like that, right? So, great. What does it mean, si, that I place before these commands, whatever it is? Great. What else? Yeah. Why does it say hayom? Why does it say hayom at all? Why does it say hayom twice? Great question. I'm not going to get into it yet. Okay, what else? More questions. It's got three times. If you go through all three verses, it's got three times it says Hayom. So either each Hayom means something different, each or we don't know, but great. What's the deal with Hayom? Did you have a question? Okay. Wait, I want questions, not answers. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Great. Okay. <laughs> all right. Here. That wins. Here you go. There you go. Oh, my God. All right. How, how do you explain the Shoah? Shabbat Shalom. Okay. We've got, but, but I love the, I, the, the context question is great, right? God says, I place before you today blessing and curse, the curse of you this, the blessing of you, or the blessing of you this, the curse of you that. But there's other places where God seems to enumerate blessings and curses or offers this sort of carrot and stick. So is this a separate one? Is this the same one? Is this referring to that? Great question, Rabbi. Yeah. Great, right. <laughs> What's, what's the, yeah, you turn into kind of Jerry Seinfeld in these. What's the deal with today? Uh, so we're going to, and Hayom, we're going to get to, uh, that's, that's the one I want to talk about for a second. Yeah, Francis, please. Great. What's the, why does the blessing come before the curse? That's a really interesting and, and fascinating question some of our commentaries pick up on here, Rosalind. Great. When God says, I give you blessing or curse, choose wisely, how much of that is actually a choice is a nice question as well. More questions? Yes. How can you go after a strange God if you don't even know them? That, by the way, question is asked by a number of our commentaries on this verse. Very nice. Let's go over to this side. Yes. Right. And if my memory serves, I don't have it in front of me. The, if you were to put the two verses side by side, the bracha and the klala, they don't, part of them match up identically linguistically, and part of them does not. In the asher, so what does it mean, bracha, if you, or sorry, that you will do, as opposed to if you will do, is a beautiful question. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Great. Great. So when it points out the that following other gods, is that the definition of what it means to be doing it, or is it uh, right lawyers? What's this called? Exha- exhaustive list versus some other kind of list? Lawyer, is that, I don't know. What? Right, yeah, well, the, the Hebrew is pratuklal. I don't know what the English is. 
Um, yes, wait, we're going to keep going. We've got more questions to go through. Yeah. Okay, so in the first verse it says bracha uklala in the singular, but w there are probably multiple blessings or curses, or what's the, the singular plural? That's an interesting one. Yes, Steve. Nice. Okay, so let's everyone follow this. So if you look, right, at the, in the first verse it says, um, I place before Hayom bracha uklala, general. But then et ha bracha, the blessing, right, itself in the accusative or whatever it is, right? Like that is interesting. Okay, so what's, is it are there two different things? Is one specific? Is one not? I like it. Let's keep going. We're, gonna, we're almost done with our questions, I promise. How many people are speaking in say say more? Right. By the way, right. So um, I, I know I, I said I wasn't going to get to answers, but I, Ora Chaim, um, one of our classical commentaries, uh, 19th century, um, he he does a whole dance on who Anochi is, and and he reads. Everyone reads it as. When, when it says, I place before you, what would you guess? Oh, interesting. There, everyone's, you're, there's no right or wrong. This is the Torah. There's no right or wrong. What, what is it? Well, you would guess who? When someone says, I place before you, blessing and curse, choose life, who is it? God. But right, but Ora Chaim says, no, it's Moses. The Anochi is Moses. And he does this, he rereads the entire thing to Moses speaking in the first person about himself, which is fascinating. I never thought of it. Okay, yes, let's take two more. Okay, now, now here's where we're going to get a little bit fun with Hebrew grammar, with the you. So, uh, Rabbi Eiser, you just got back from Israel maybe most recently, so we're going to make you do the Hebrew grammar. There's no grammar in Israel. <laughs> did, wait, I'm so, I'm so sorry, but were, did you just sort of go through correcting all the signs on the protest? Like, were you just with a pen? I could imagine, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> So, but will you, Rabbi Forrest, so re'eh, anochi, notain, right, what is, what, what number is that? Singular, right? Right, look, you, singular, see, I place before, lifne chem, is what number? Plural. What's going on? Within the same uh, person we're speaking to, we begin by saying, hey, you, singular, look, I place before you, plural, a blessing and a curse. Well, that, I mean, that just sends the rabbis, the commentaries into, you know, pages and pages and pages of commentary on it. So uh, let's take one more question, and then, uh, it, was, was there one over here that I missed? Perry. No, you're good. So let's do this for, for 36 seconds. Let's take this number question. God, said, God or Moses, right? I place before you, singular, or you look here, singular. I place before you, plural, blessing and curse. The blessing that you, the curse that, et cetera, et cetera. What, what, now, play the game of commentary. I, I'll tell you what some of them said, but play the game of commentator. What would you do with this grammatical issue? God seems to be speaking in both the plural and the singular at the same time, or to both the singular and plural individuals at the same time. Take 30 seconds to yourself, or turn to the person next to you, but let's think of what would you do as a commentary, how would you solve this problem? Okay, well, you're all talking so nicely. I loathe to stop. All right, so who's got a thought? Yes. Great. 
So, okay, so my actions, my cho the choice is mine, but my actions affect everyone. Thank you, Cleocar. So, uh, a frame of lunch at 16th century Prague writes specifically that. He specifically says that the reason is that the, the re'e is meant to be each individual has this choice, but it involves the entire community, and so it is something that we should remember. Our choices affect others, which is, which is beautiful. You can't volunteer other people. That means I'm just going to go to you, Avram. What you got? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. So thank you, Tsor Hamor, 20th century Ukrainian rabbi, who says exactly that, right? That, that the point of this is to remind us, it's not just that my actions affect, but others' actions affect mine. And as I'm thinking about the choices that I make, I'm also sort of says Tsor Hamor, and this gets us into maybe trouble, but I'm supposed to look at the actions of others and know that that's going to reflect on me also. And kind of, we're all in this together, we need to do, do right as a community. Who's got another answer? Yeah, Rabbi, please. And with that, we have Rashi. Uh, so thank you, yeah, no, it's for stepping in. Uh, no, it's, Rashi is exactly right, right? That the re'e is meant to teach us that in this moment, in other parts of the Torah, and maybe, by the way, this is where, maybe there's a difference in the see, the hear, I don't know, but in other parts of the Torah, God is speaking to everyone, and everyone sort of interprets what God says, or hears what God says, but in this moment, we're supposed to understand that God spoke to each and every individual, and each individual heard it for themselves, and that it's up to all of us to see this choice for ourselves as an individual. Was there any, any on, on this side? I don't want to, yes, Jonathan, and then Ilan, and then we will finish up. Okay. <laughs> Oh God. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. That is a beautiful way to... So you hold the dichotomy of the singular and the plural for both the beginning and the end of it, right? That it is both the choice and the blessings operate in microcosm on each of us as an individual and in macrocosm as us as a society. Yeah. Very cool. But <laughs> um, excellent. Uh, and sort of, I could maybe lump that into Tzor Hamor, although you did a little bit differently than he did, uh, but he, he tries to hold the unity of spirit of the Jewish people together through this as well. Dr. Kaplan, take us last one. Nice. 
Um, did everyone hear that? I don't have to repeat it because I'm not sure that's. By the way, I, fascinating also that that no one I read says that, which I would have assumed, especially Ibn Ezra, who's often sort of a grammatical reader, who often kind of says, everybody calm down, don't make too much out of this, it's just the way the grammar works. Ibn Ezra doesn't say that, he actually says what Rabbi Cooper said, right? He knew that Rabbi Cooper was gonna say it, and he, what? You paid him to say that? <laughs> Been here for a while. Uh, so, he, Eloheinu is not plural. Uh, you guys gonna, okay, you guys are going to have to fight about it at Kiddush. Okay, I want to conclude with just w one last piece because the split there, this dichotomy of number can be read also into the bracha and the klala. And I, and I just want to point out one commentary that I'm going to take us through. It'll take just a minute and then I promise we're on to Musaf. So the Ben Ishchai, um, the Ben Ishchai who is Iraq, uh, 19th century, Yosef Chaim, don't remember the rest of the name, but he writes a, a legal commentary that involves a lot of mysticism, and he brings this verse, and he reads it in, he reads Hayom in an interesting way. So he says, God, God says, see, I place before you Hayom Bracha Uklala. And he says that the word Hayom should not be read Hayom, but take the hay off of it, and hey, as in numerology, stands in for what number? Five. So he says, I give you hey yom. I give you five days that are blessing and five days that are curses. And then he enumerates them, right? So you can guess, what are the five days that are blessing? Rosh Hashanah, Sukkot, uh, Pesach, uh, Shemini Atzeret, Pesach, Shavuot. Those are the five days, the first days of those are the five days of blessing. What are the five days of curse? I heard one of them. Tisha B'Av, right? And it's actually Tisha B'Av and um, Asiri B'Av, right? It's, it's both of those days. It's Tzom Gedalia, it's Aser B'Tevet, and it's Shvaz Arbatamuz are the five days of curses. These are all fast days. So he says you can choose either you celebrate on my days of blessing, or you get the days of cursing. And it, the choice is up to you, sort of, as how you're going to live, which is in some ways an extension of the, you know, you better do this or else model that we've already been talking about a little bit, the carrot and the stick, I think you called it. But also sees in it this sort of unity of calendar and days as we go through that some are blessing or there's curses or he continues the other way to read it is the same thing as the sun and this is the one I really like he says so the sun which we call yom right the sun is the day is both blessing and curse in it um, where's my uh, dermatologist here he says the sun is blessing and cursing in that it whitens your clothes but darkens your skin <laughs> they knew about suntans he says it is, um, it, which can be seen as good or as bad. It is good for people with strong eyes. It is bad for people with bad eyes. Um, so the sun at one and the same time has a blessing and a curse. So too, says the Ben Ishchai, our Torah has a blessing and a curse. Because, not the blessing and curse in it, but he says, because it can be used for good or it can be used for bad. And for some people, it is strengthening, and for some people, it is weakening. And I love that he preserves this duality of number, and he sees it not as just this one point, or God is speaking to the individual or the communal, but it's actually the whole project of the Torah, can be good or can be bad. And so then, what's the choice? If we're reading it according to the Ben Ishchai, it's on all of us or it's on the individual, either way. But the choice between blessing and curse is not what? It's not the um, choosing one over the other of what's being offered to us. The choice is how we use the Torah or how we celebrate our holidays. We choose the blessing and the curse in how we use our tradition to be a blessing for others or to be harmful to others. I think is a, a very interesting way um, to read this and to look in a deep dive at the grammar to get to what I find is a very meaningful point in how we can live our lives in our religion. Shabbat Shalom!
thanks for uh, participating in class. There's, uh, you know, grades will be assigned afterwards. And 